Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and I want to talk about Mac OS Tahoe, the previous update and this update, and what it means for you. And I think that's important to talk about before you even get to some of the things that are in there. Because why even give a crap about, oh, I've added a button to the Photos app, instead of the major parts of the operating system that affect you on a daily basis. Now, if Tahoe is running wonderful for you, that's great, and I'm very happy for you. We're going to go over some of the comments that you posted about your experiences with macOS Tahoe. And I think we need to be open about this operating system and what it could do to your system if things don't go right or if it's not the same system that you had on, for example, macOS Sequoia. What do I mean by that? The amount of negative experiences that I've seen with Mac OS Tahoe has surpassed any of the operating systems I've seen in the last 15 years. I can't think, there's basically only two operating systems that I can think of, and that's Mac OS Big Sur. And the reason why Mac OS Big Sur was a problem was because of the fact that it merged Apple Silicon and Intel for the very first time. So it had a lot of bumps in the road. And there was a lot of complaints about Mac OS Big Sur. We got to go all the way back to OS X Lion. And that was the operating system directly after Snow Leopard, which was highly regarded as one of the greatest operating systems for Mac Apple has ever released. And they changed a bunch of stuff and had a lot of complaints. Those are the two operating systems that stick out to me. The operating systems in between, they had their ups and downs, but those are the big ones. Now, Tahoe is right there with them. It surpasses Lion for sure. And honestly, it surpasses Big Sur. Because I had lived through Big Sur, and we talked about Big Sur. We went right through all Big Sur's issues. It's not just me. It's you and your experience putting in the comments how your upgrade went. I can sit here and tell you all day, like, oh, the update worked, and it took two minutes to install or five minutes to download or whatever. No one cares about that stuff. They care about the everyday experience that you're going to have with a machine that you use to do school, work, your family life. If you can't get that stuff done, what is the point of all this anyway? We need to have this discussion. Right, so let's go over some of the good comments that you had about Mac OS Tahoe. Remember, everybody's experience is going to be a little bit different, but you have to take the majority of what's going on and the feedback. And I also understand that with all feedback, sometimes you're going to get a larger amount of negative feedback because not everybody is going to be so passionate about saying, hey, I installed Tahoe and it works great. No problems whatsoever. And I totally understand that. There is plenty of those too. We've got blinded eyes. I've had Tahoe on my M1 Air since beta 7 and it runs amazing. The battery's fine and the only glitches I have are some animation bugs, but overall it's nice. And again, these are the experiences that I still want to highlight. There's still going to be some experiences where the user is great. And you look at the system and M1 Air, that's good to hear. Uh, Jim, I installed 2601 on my Intel MacBook Pro without any problem. It seems quite a bit slower though than Sequoia. And that's why I didn't recommend installing Tahoe on any Intel right now. I just don't even recommend it. Jim is showing that it does work. Imagine if you upgrade to Tahoe and then you notice that compared to Sequoia on your Intel, it's a little bit more laggy, a little bit more slow in areas. And that might be enough for you to say, this is not acceptable. I'm going back. Peter, I installed Tahoe on my 16 inch MacBook Pro i7, it works fine. Upgrade went flawless. So again, another experience from Intel running good on a MacBook Pro. Bill, fresh install of 2601, been a good experience so far on my MacBook Air M4. I seem to have better luck than I do from a fresh install than I do an upgrade. And my main machine will remain on Sequoia until 26.1, which we're talking about today, to see that feedback. And that's what I wanted to talk about too. So we're also going to make sure that we try to collect all the feedback from 26.1. It's brand new today. Drop today. But from what I've seen of the people that have installed it from beta, we've got some good positive feedback. So let's see if that continues on to the masses though. Because remember, this didn't start boiling up until a large amount of normal users every day started to install it and then we started seeing a bunch of problems. The other thing we want to talk about is the upgrade versus the install fresh with any operating system, whether you have Windows, Linux, Mac OS, a lot of times the fresh installation from an erased disk to brand new is going to be your complete best experience. What I also recommend is not even restoring your backup until you see how the system is at a base level. If you install Tahoe and it's running perfectly with a base system, no lag whatsoever, everything's running great, and then you restore all your files, all your apps, all your special settings, super slow, you gotta start weeding into what's going on there. 
but that's a very good point compared to a erase install compared to an upgrade. Roxy, I got a brand new Mac Mini M4 last week and upgraded to Tahoe immediately after booting up for the first time, no issues whatsoever. It may a little bit have been a little bit slower than expected at first, but it seems to be running fine now, likely for the reason I talked about. I quite like Tahoe personally, and this is my first modern Mac in 20 years. I don't have a recent baseline to compare to, and that's why we try to talk about it, and that's why we test two different systems here, and we try to see all the information coming together. And we also know that Tahoe is a completely rewrite of a lot of different parts of the operating system with visuals, behind the scenes things, and all that. And just like Roxy mentioned, that after an update, remember, your system has to do a lot of maintenance items. So if you are just getting your snapshot of what Tahoe is like in that first 10, 15 minutes, or even a half hour, give it some time, let it slow down and install, then see how it's running. AJ updated my main to 26.0 and then 2601 works for just fine. No complaints whatsoever. And again, let me know in the comments. If you updated, I want to know your experience. And then please come back after you've installed 26.1. Has the experience improved at all? I want to know. Now let's take a look at some of the more critical comments. Tau update makes my iMac M1 slow down. Very slow boot ups. Apple, please fix this. If I had to take all the comments, put them together, the biggest one is slowness, whether it's from animations, boot up times to around the operating system. And I'll be honest with you, that's one of the most frustrating things about using a computer. If I click on activity monitor, I want it to come up just like this. That's it. Is, is that that hard? Terminal, like this, done. That's expected. If it takes like more than a couple seconds to open up those applications, that is especially on an Apple Silicon. This is a 2013 Mac Pro. Still a great machine, but it's running Sequoia. No issues, instant. Click it, open, simple. That's a big deal. In my book, how fast the system works without lag is important. This OS has been the worst OS update. My Mac Boy used to be fine, and now it's lagging. and can hardly use it. Can I go back to Sequoia? The answer is yes. And normally every year I come out with a downgrade video that shows you exactly step-by-step step how to do that. And I have not been able to do that, but this, seeing your comments in, in here saying, how do I get back to good old trusty Sequoia here? I'm gonna make that my next video. We're gonna do that. Yes, I'm having many challenges with Tahoe 2601. Don't know what to do and it is affecting my work. That's what I'm talking about. Imagine if you count on your machine to do your work every day. You already have enough stresses in life. The last thing you wanna do is install an update and you can't even get your work done. I've had to roll back to Sequoia because I'm a developer and I have some of my apps crashing and glitching. I don't plan on reinstalling Tahoe anytime soon. I'll probably skip the entire OS. Is that the experience that Apple wants its users to have? And in my opinion, what I'm thinking has happened here, the developers did the best that they could. It seems like I'm being a real negative here, but what I'm doing is I'm sharing this information with you. And they did the best they could with the time that they had. And honestly, I think if they would have left it to what they've done in the past, which did a later release into October, a lot of this stuff might have been cleared up. But to force it down to get to that iOS and iPhone launch date, we're suffering like this. And it's not fair. Imagine if they had a little bit more time to finish some of this extra polish and then your first experience was maybe 26.1 and everything's great. In my eyes, that's always better than trying to rush it down and meeting some arbitrary date. The battery life has gone fast, even in sleep mode. This is one of, this is probably slowness and batteries next. If you look at all the comments that I've read, whether it's Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and in the comments of my videos, that is one of the biggest things for Tahoe is the battery. When you're using your laptop, especially with Apple Silicon, you should not even be thinking about battery. You should be able to use that system, put it to sleep, and when it wakes up, it's ready to go. And when I see this, that's not a good sign because that's another one of those top ranking things on that list that are important. The, the quickness of the operating system, your battery life, and the dependability and the reliability of the system. And again, this is not the first time I've seen this. This is a pattern of battery loss and battery problems with Mac OS Tahoe. I upgraded my MacBook Air M2 yesterday and the computer is getting hot when I use it. Also, the battery is depleted within a few hours of working it. So no, Tahoe is not working with me. I wish I didn't upgrade. If you're noticing a pattern here, it's hard to, to deny 
all these people talking about this and the same things are happening. It's not like, oh, well, my Adobe doesn't work and then my Photos app is corrupted. It's these same topics, the battery, the slowness. It's getting hot when I'm running it, right? This is an M2 MacBook Air. Now, it's an Apple Silicon. Yes, it doesn't have a fan, but it's not an Intel. Intels are supposed to be known to get hot. Not Apple Silicon. I'm never updating from Sequoia to Tahoe. It's the word. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, especially reading all these here. Now, I selected this one because I wanted to be clear on something. If we start to see Tahoe make a turn for the better in the, in the later updates, then let's we can change our opinion on it. If all of a sudden Apple's fixing all this stuff and Tahoe's running great, no battery issues, no hot, running hot, no lags, the applications are running, great. Let's talk about it. Let's sing its praises. And then you can update, but maybe not until we can get a better grasp on what's going on here. I wish I never upgraded to Tahoe. 20% of my emails come up with an empty email attachment. And many of these are for, of critical importance. Mac Music, my most used app is slow. It's a joke. Beach ball for 30 to 40 seconds before opening the next song. We shouldn't be seeing that, especially just playing a song. Downgrade to Sequoia, <laughs> to Sequoia it is. Recycle bin. Thank you so much for the video. I've been running a 2019 MacBook Pro. I updated the Tahoe and I'm regretting that decision already. And now I'm seeing lag just about doing anything, trying to watch videos. I'm thinking of downgrading all the way down to Sonoma, but I don't know if it's worth the hassle. It's a tough call. And that's why I wanted to highlight this particular comment. If you're in this situation, you're sitting here thinking, my machine's not running good at all. What am I going to do? Am I just going to think that an update's magically going to fix this? I guess it's possible. Or am I losing time with all the lag and the problems that I'm having? Should I back up and restore all the way back to Sequoia or Sonoma? And that's a tough call because I can't predict on what 26 is going to look like until these, these comments and these reports are going to start coming through. Obviously, I'm going to install it and start using it. But we, we have to get a handle on this. And that's why, you know, I just don't, just don't upgrade until we until you have a better idea on any of this stuff on what it's going yes for security updates that's different because you want to keep your mac secure but when we're talking about bigger feature updates let's just give it a little bit of time and that might save you a lot of energy and, and heartache later update is causing problems in my macbook m4 pro battery is draining faster sometimes finder's not even working i've had non-stop lag and sluggishness on my m2 pro mac mini Things like word processors, unusable for me. I'm switching back to Sequoia. This is unbearable. Very slow on M1 Air. Choppy animation, slower load times. Think twice before you upgrade. If, <laughs> if you have a 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch, do not update ever, period. Thank you, Kyle. Don't install it. Works badly and the lag is horrible. The input lag. One scrolling is a huge issue. Every browser, Outlook email, scrolling, huge issue. Never having before with Mac, running into issues on an M3 Pro and an M1. When I do a fresh restart, everything is okay for an hour or so, and then it starts, this issue starts, pff, you shouldn't have to be rebooting. On Sequoia, I'm not rebooting at all. None. You shouldn't have to reboot your machine at all. I think we get an idea on what's going on here. I wanted to go over two quick comments before we continue. Not sure why, but I've heard that you say that 15.7.1 is the latest version of Sequoia. Apple sent me an update for 15.7.2, and I'm still using Sequoia on a 2012 MacBook Pro. Let's talk about that. In system settings and software update, make sure that you do not have beta updates turned on. Because if you do, it shows that you have an update available, and it, sometimes it doesn't mark it as a beta. It might just say 15.7.2, but you're not looking at this. You're just seeing this. Oh, I got an update. But when you have these off, you're only going to see the production versions on here. So make sure this is off if it had it on. And you should only then see. And then make sure you go into the automatic updates and make sure these are always off, especially on Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs. But you can even do this on your production Mac. But again, I don't want you to miss updates. But you are still notified. You'll still get this. Look, I'm still getting this. So you're still going to get this and you're still getting the X-Protect and the definitions for Gatekeeper and stuff. So you can leave that on. Don't worry about that. But this gives you full control. It's not going to install automatically and it will still let you know that there's a software update available, but you have the power to do so. Super nice keyboard. Would you be able to share the model name? Reminds me of the old school Mac keyboards, which were great. I love this keyboard. It is actually 
unfortunately, I'll, this came out years ago, and I've got a listing, and I'll put it in the comments. Macaulay Backlit, Mechanical Keyboard for Mac, Comfortable, Accurate Typing, Classic Mechanical Keyboard 104 Keys, Wired USB with a weighted base. And it has different uh, brightness settings and stuff like that. It's a fantastic keyboard, nice and clicky. Again, I'll put a link in there. Unfortunately, you got to search it on uh, eBay or Facebook Marketplace to be able to find one nowadays. But what a cool keyboard. Thanks for the comment. Hey guys, I just finished editing this video and that's why it took so long to come out with the 26.1 update video yesterday because I kept going back and forth. I sat down, I started recording, and after just reading a lot of your comments, I just thought, like, we need to have a conversation about this. And I had put it all together in one video, and I thought, like, no one's going to want to watch this. They just want information about the update. They don't want to hear me ranting on about this. So I, at the very least, I thought maybe someone might want to hear me discuss this with you but it can't be in that main video so that's why i created the second video and i know it sounds a little bit negative but you know i like apple and i know you do too but we're never going to sit here and and be a stooge for this large company right if something's not working right or something isn't what we expected we can talk about it and sometimes it's not going to be good like this and it's important to have this open dialogue let me know in the comments let me know if you enjoy these just conversations like this or you would rather have more positive things right and i totally understand both sides i want to hear from you anyway i hope you enjoy this video and we will catch you next one thanks